The Lord will bless someone today. The power of the Holy Ghost will bless someone today. You are welcome to Hope Encounter Service. Service of Encounter with Hope. Today I want to talk about don't miss your season. What did I say? Don't miss your season. Because time is everything in life. Don't miss your season because what? Time is everything in life. Turn your Bible to the book of Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verse 1 to 8. Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verse 1 to 8. We're going to read it and understand that everything in life is about timing. Somebody said timing. When the time is right, what did I say? Everything will be all right. It looks as if it's difficult. It looks as if it's never going to happen. It looks as if God is not hearing your prayer. It looks as if things are not working. But let me tell you, when the time is right, everything happens with ease. Everything happened with ease. To everything there is a season. I'm reading from verse 1. And a time for every matter of purpose under heaven. To everything there is a season. And a time for every matter of purpose under this earth. There is a season to every time. No matter the matter on this earth, the Bible says there is a time to it. And it is your duty to understand the time and the season. There's a saying in the Yoruba language that says, when a child is due to have cutlass, you give him cutlass to begin to part his own way. When he's due for whole, you give him whole to mature and begin to farm his own farm. So you must understand the time. Hallelujah. You must understand when you are due for a particular thing in your life and you seize the advantage of it. Because everything is time. Amen, somebody. In verse 2, it says, A time to be born and a time to die. Every one of us was born and every one of us will die. No one will escape here alive. We will all die to leave this place except Christ come. Hallelujah. So you must begin to understand that just like you were born, you will also die. Amen, somebody. Amen. But my prayer for you that may you accomplish your purpose before you die. Amen. That amen is too weak for somebody. Amen. That is when you said you were born or you came, you saw and you conquered. You came, you saw, and you all conquer. Because you know that everything in life is within a frame. Time for human being is not infinity, it's not forever. The only person that possesses infinity time is what? It's God. As long as you are a human being, we have lost that privilege in the Garden of Eden that man will die after the sin enter into a man. God said man will die. So you must understand that you don't have forever. Verse 
Look at what he said again. A time to plant and a time to pluck what is planted. A time to kill and a time to heal. A time to break down and a time to build up. A time to plant. A farmer understands this better than anybody. Because when you miss the season of planting, no matter what you grow, what will happen? It will not grow well. We have a peer in our compound. Year in, year out, it used to come out very big, very nice. But because the rainy season was shifted this year, it was very abnormal. It didn't rain the time it should rain. The pear could not grow very well. They are all small, small. After the seed has come out fully, the rain now started falling, but it's already late. The seed has already been formed. So we have a stunt, it has a stunted growth. So it wasn't big like it used to be. And it makes me remind that there is time for everything. You can't just take your seed and say, I'm going to plant any time of the year. Do you? No. There are certain things that will not survive if, if you plant it, even if you water them. It has to be in their season. That's why we have season to everything. Season of mango. Season of corn, season of pineapple, season of this, season of that. Everything is in season. And you must be a fool not to accept it. Hallelujah. It's only a fool that we don't accept that there is a season to everything, isn't it? Because we live and we see everything by season. You all move by season. A time to kill. No physically killing. It's talking about the certain thing we need to kill in our life. Kill certain habits. Kill certain behavior. Kill certain attitude in your life. You must put an end to it. To kill is to terminate something. There are certain things you must terminate in your life that no, at this point, no. You are a child, you started smoking at the age of 13 or 14. And they have been telling people that smoking can lead to cancer. You saw it, and at age 60, they are still telling you to stop smoking. Did somebody need to tell you? Something you have been doing from 13. 23, 33, 43, 53, you are hitting 60. And they say, don't do this anymore. And you are seeing. So there are some people, you know, that once they miss the season, they expose their life to danger. Hallelujah. We women, we just worry ourselves for nothing. When you talk to people, they don't listen. Let them face the consequence. The Bible says, if you rescue a fool by his word of his mouth, so that he will not be scolded, you will continue rescuing him all the days of your life. Is somebody understanding what I'm saying? Something, somebody refused to learn. And every time you could rescue them, he said you will rescue them all the days of your life because you do not allow them to learn. It is when they go through the pain and learn, they will not understand what you are rescuing them from and they will not change their behavior. Somebody say a big amen. So stop rescuing this fool. If somebody make a genuine mistake and you correct them, you rescue them, that's fine. He said, teach a wise and he shall yet be wiser. But a fool that you keep teaching, they will even turn against you for teaching them. So let them face their consequence. Then they will not learn. Sometimes you need to be mean in order to be kind. Hallelujah. You need to be what? Mean in order to be kind. This is how life is. If you continue to rescue a fool, you will rescue that fool all the days of your life. That will be your assignment on it. Hallelujah. 
It's just like a child. Every time he goes near fire, I want to touch fire. Don't touch the fire. The child will never understand. But one day when the hand goes near the small and he feels the radiation, nobody will tell the child not to go there anymore. There are certain things you have to learn it in a hard way. Amen, somebody. Amen. Stop rescuing a fool. It will occupy you unnecessarily all the days of your life. Stop rescuing a war, a fool, because it will occupy your life. Take your attention, take your time, all the days of your life. Let the fool face it, and it will learn after. Amen, somebody. A time to kill and a time to heal. After you heal. There is a season for it. There is a season for it. He said, a time to break down and a time to build up. Sometimes when you notice that you have hit a wall, don't continue going. It's a food when you get to the wall and it still keep going. When you notice that certain mistake has been made, pull it down. Correct it. Start all over. Don't continue to give excuse for what is not excusable. Face the situation. You must know the time I get to the end of it. Let me make a new decision. Am I speaking with somebody today? A time has to be that you break down. You break the system down, you break the behavior down, you break that uncertainty down, and you started building again. A time to break down and a time to build. If you notice your, your house has a foundational problem and you keep passing it and passing it, if you don't take a decision to know that at this time I have to pull this house down, that house will kill you one day. Because there's nothing you would do to a faulty foundation than to pull it down. Sometimes we manage it. Sometimes we do this. Sometimes we do that. It's all over the world, no matter where it is. You saw what happened during the week at Miami. That a high-story condominium collapsed and killed many people. Even in America. Nothing can be done to a faulty foundation than to pull it down. Any attempt to keep passionate, it, you will waste money all the days of your life. You must get to a point and say, at this point, I'm pulling you down. I'm, I'm rebuilding. There is a time for everything in life. Hallelujah. You must know the time to put full stop. At this point, I'm not going any further. I've gotten to the waiting. I've accepted my fate. But I'm ready to try a new thing altogether. Do not be afraid to start all over. There are some people you just have to separate yourself from them, no matter who they are, and start afresh. You will go through pain, you will go through difficulty, you will go through trial, but you will notice it after you separate yourself, the end, you will be happy. The beginning may be tough, but the end of it, you'll be happy you'll make that decision. There is nothing you can do to a dead horse. Stop crying over it. The horse is dead. You'll go there every morning, go and cry. you go and wait. you go and spend time. You are wasting your time. You are wasting your energy. You are wasting your emotion. You are wasting your resources. You are wasting your tears. Share the tears for better things. Tears of love or tears of joy. Don't waste it over a dead horse. When the horse is dead, move on. Tell your neighbor, move on. When the horse is dead, do what? Move on. Nowhere to call it a quit. 
That is the weak point of most people in life. They don't know where to say, this is my full stop. They like to push, 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 push. Can you imagine, sir, the t-shirt you are wearing, right that today, it got turned on the right, you push it with blue. Get turned on the left, you push it with red. And at the end of the day, left, right, front, back, how will it look? A patch life doesn't appear well. <laughs> when the thing is too much of passion, you look like a caricature. Stop passion. Tell your neighbor, stop passion. At least you can manage it if it tear once. You can say patch one. But when it begins to tear all over, get rid of it. Start all over. Hallelujah. You look better with even no clothes on and you are jogging than to have a patch. You say, I see this madman. Look at how he has patched his clothes. Is that how they would call the person? If you don't wear clothes, they said maybe you are doing exercise. But if you patch too much, they say you are a madman. <laughs> Am I speaking with somebody in the house? So you must know the time to tear down and the time to build. Somebody said, time is everything. A time to cast stone and a time to gather stone together. A time to embrace and a time to restrain from embracing. There must be a time you cast stone. But a time must come you gather stone together. A time must come. You must tell somebody, leave my life, leave my home, leave my destiny. Because you are a bad baggage in my life. Leave me. The Bible says, Jesus looked at Satan when he came to tempt him on the rock. After the third temptation, Jesus tell him, get away from me, you Satan. And the Bible says he left him for a while. Satan left him for a while. Even Satan is here. He knows when you, are, when you mean the business. Satan knows it when you mean the business. Hallelujah. But if you are still toiling with him, he knows. My father used to tell us that if you give a goat to the God, you release the rope. But you say this goat, I have given it to the God, and you are holding the rope. You don't mean it. You are not ready. Hallelujah. If you have to do it, do it well. If it's time to let go, let go well. Hallelujah. Let go well. If you say you are not doing with that boyfriend anymore, why are you checking his status every night? For what? To see whether he has had a new girlfriend or boyfriend. You are monitoring him, checking him on social media, and you say you have break up. What kind of breakup is that? Break to follow. Break to what? Follow. That's not breakup. It's follow up. If you say, I'm letting go, let him go. And if you want to chase him, chase him back. It's like a proverb in my place. They say when they give the... A mother give a meat to a child. And the child said, Mommy, mommy, this is a bone. And the mother said, Throw it away. Amen. Amen, somebody. The mother said, Throw it away. And the child started crying. He said, Mommy, there is a little meat around the bone. He said, Eat it. He said, It's a bone. Throw it away. Then you said, There is a little meat around it. You must be definite. Hallelujah. Life does not support weak people. Life does not favor indecision people, indecisive people. People who cannot take a decision. Life favor the bold. Life favor the rugged. Life favor those who know what they want and they go for what they want. Life favor those who know their timing. At this time, I can't do it anymore. My bye-bye is my bye-bye. My no is my no. Don't let your no carry the element of yes around it. 
You say when a woman is saying no, she means yes. Somebody is touching you, touching your breath. No, don't touch me. You are there laughing. Have you seen no that is coming with smile before? <laughs> and later he said they rape you. You rape yourself. If you mean no, let everybody see that it's no. They touch you. Ah, don't touch me. You are smiling. You are shaking. Who are you deceiving? Yourself. Let your no be no. Do you know when some people say no, the action and their the tone of their no you make you panic. This person mean business. Hallelujah. So this is to a, to women. When you mean no, say it louder, not with smiling, not with giggling. Somebody understanding wisdom this morning. A time to get and a time to lose. A time to keep and a time to cast away. When you don't know the time to let go, it will hurt you. Bible said there is he that gathered more than enough, but it lent to his head. No when to give away. No when to hold back. There must be time for everything. Don't be a one-way person in your life. Everyone that is set, that is only one particular way they are, they have problem. There must be time to give. And there must be time to hold back. Wisdom. Every time you are giving to the, to the detriment of everything around you, you are in trouble. Every time you hold back, you alone, you keep this, keep that shoe you have bought since 1980 still in your house. The clothes they have given you when you are getting married in 1940 is still with you. Your house has turned to a museum. Antique house. Everything. There is nothing go out in your house. Your own is only to come in. Nothing go out of your house. But everything is to just come in. You are what? You are in trouble. You must understand the timing. A time to rain and a time to sue. A time to keep silence and a time to speak. I am very particular about this one. A time to keep silence and a time to speak. Every time you are silent, you don't want them to know that you are part of it. Every time you play a hypocritical game, where you should have speak as a man, you keep quiet. A problem is coming upon your head. Because everything in life, you must know when to speak. And you must know when to keep quiet. When you speak, when you are supposed to be quiet, you will be in trouble. When you are quiet, when you are supposed to speak, you will be in trouble. Understand this, that you cannot be quiet all your life, and you cannot be talking all your life. Let go. Let go. It is not every time you speak. No decision that you should not speak. No decision that you should, they should hear your voice. Hallelujah. You want to be friend of everybody. You don't want to offend anybody by speaking when you are supposed to speak. Let me tell you, you are the greatest hypocrite I've ever seen. Bible says, God described you as, you are neither cold or hot. He said, I will spill you out of my mouth. You are neither cold or hot. I will spill you out of my mouth. When you sin in justice, speak. Let me
me die the death of a truthful person so that my end may be well. It's a popular word. I hear my father speaking all the time in his preaching. Let me die the death of a truthful person so that my end will be well. Some of you or some people, their end cannot be well. It's not a curse because they have lied. They have kept quiet when they should have been speaking. When they die, they leave problem behind. They know the truth. They never say it. They know the just the thing, the just thing to do, but they never do it. When they die, they leave problems upon problems upon problems behind. There's no way their back will be good. Know the time to speak and know the time to keep quiet. Know your timing. Know your what? Timing. Know your timing. If you're a wife, know when to speak and know when to keep quiet. It's not every time you open your mouth. Sometimes let silence speak for you. Hallelujah. Sometimes what? Let silence speak for you. One of the most powerful people in this world, they are the people who learn to control their tongue. If you can control your tongue, you can control your destiny. You can control everything. Because so many things want you to, you know, Open your mouth and speak. But you are saying to yourself, I'm not going to be moved. When you are the type that talk every time, blah, 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 people don't take you serious. They can't keep secret with you. They can't take you serious because they know that you are a short temper person. But if you are the type, don't you know that you are always afraid of somebody who's quiet? Ah, we don't know what is in his mind though. <laughs> this man, this thing that I did, that he didn't say anything. <laughs> hey, what could it be in his mind? But somebody who talk, you have said everything in your mouth. Everybody know what you want to do. But somebody who is quiet, you have to go home and have a sleepless night over him. Hey, this thing that this man didn't say anything. <laughs> I don't know where he may come. I don't know which angle he may come. I don't know what he may say. A lady, was, a lady came in one day and he was searching the bag of the husband. And he saw a condom in the bag of the husband after the husband came back from the trip. So the lady cleaned everything and he put the condom on top of the bag. So when the man entered the room, he saw the condom. He said, ah, yawa don't gas. <laughs> so the man didn't say anything. The wife didn't say anything. The wife came back after some few minutes. Honey, your, fo your food is ready. Come and eat your food. Then they sit on the dining table. The man couldn't eat the thing. As he was taking the food, the food was falling from the spoon. The wife didn't say anything. Was just said, how was your trip? How was everything? When the man finished, the honey, honey, your hot water is ready to bath. Are you ready? The man doesn't know whether to go there, whether the woman is coming to kill her in the bathroom, kill him in the bathroom, or to go above. So when he entered the bathroom, he opened the door ajar, <laughs> so that in case the woman is coming with knife, he can escape. The man finished bathing. They were on the bed, they lie down, the man couldn't sleep. He was just turning eyes like this, whether when I'm sleeping, the woman may slap me to death. <laughs> and I say, honey, do you have, the husband go, honey, do you have something you want to tell me? He said, no. Huh? Do you have anything in your mind? <laughs> said, no, what is it? I don't have anything in my mind. I'm okay. <laughs> Are you sure? <laughs> Say, I'm sure. Unless you have something to tell me. Me, I don't have anything to tell you. <laughs> the woman slept soundly, but the man couldn't sleep. The following morning, the woman wake up again, do the breakfast, and everything was nice. The man ate, was about to go to the work. The man would go to the door. And come back. Dear, are you sure you don't have anything to tell me? <laughs> Please, if there's anything in your heart, just tell me. Let's settle it. 
You want to say, I don't have anything to say. I, if I have anything to tell you, since yesterday, I would have told you. And I said, my bag. And I said, ah, your bag, what happened? I pack your bag and I clean it and I, I throw the rubbish away and I arrange everything. What happened? Say, the thing on top. <laughs> say, what is that thing? <laughs> I didn't see the thing. <laughs> say, are you sure you didn't see? Say, I didn't see anything. Then the man went to work. Two o'clock, the man has come back home again. <laughs> he said, there's something I want to tell you. And there is a condom in my bag. <laughs> He said, are you sure? He said, yes. And I'm sure you saw it. You didn't say anything to me. If you have anything you want to do to me, please do it. <laughs> when I travel, I use condom. <laughs> so, <laughs> you see, it's the man himself. You see, power, there is power in being quiet. Not the quiet that you'll be using your body to talk. Oh. You know when you say somebody's quiet, you call me, why are you calling me too much? If you want to talk about the matter, talk. But quietness means that not even do as if it bothers you or you see it. Not the quietness that uh, you show in your body language. That one is not quiet. Somebody said there's power in big silence. That is the way. I believe somebody has learned a lesson today. That is why they say Cat is the master of a dog. Do you know why? Because what cat will see and just throw away face? Dog will see the whole neighbor will hear. Whoa, 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 whoa. But cat will just look at you and throw face. Like a wallaby that. <laughs> so be a cat. If you are to be an animal, choose a cat, not a dog. Hallelujah. He said, if you are to come like an animal, what type of animal would you like to come? Come like a cat, not a dog. You are too wide. You are Rottweiler. You are too wide. Amen, somebody. There is power in silence. There is power. That is why we have to understand that time is everything. But that is not how you will keep quiet all the time. Next time when you speak, they listen to you because you don't talk anyhow. When the quiet people speak, people take them serious. So you must know the time to speak. And you must know the time to be quiet. Amen, somebody. Time to save the situation. Turn your Bible to Esther chapter 4 verse 14. Esther chapter 4. Verse 14. You know the story of Mordecai and Esther. How Esther became a king, a queen in the land. And the Jews were being persecuted. And what happened? When the Jews were being persecuted, he said they are going to be killed. And they were telling Esther to go and talk to the king. And Esther said, the king has not called me. Why should I go there? And she knew that if anything happened to all the Jews, nothing will happen to her. Hallelujah. Nothing will happen to her. Which is you go to the computer and uh, come and take the camera. Amen, somebody. And Esther chapter 4 verse 14 says, For if you remain silent at this time, it is Mordecai that is talking to the Esther. That if you remain silent at this time, liberation and rescue will arise for the Jew from another place. And you and your father's house will perish since you do not help when you have the chance. And who knows whether you have attained royalty for such a time as this and for this very purpose. Help when you are supposed to help. Help when you are in power. Help when you have the authority. Help when you understand season and timing. Help. 
Hallelujah. You have to understand when to help. You have to understand everything in your life. When you have opportunity to help others, help them. When you have opportunity to do good for others, do good. When you have opportunity to help, help others. When you have opportunity to do good, don't look away. Because you never know tomorrow. Today, you are the one in a position to help. Help. You don't know what the person may be tomorrow. You don't know what the person may turn out to be tomorrow. Mordecai said to Esther, you don't know that why? Maybe because you can save the Jew. That's why God sent you to palace. Remember, you were a slave. And by divine arrangement, you became the queen. And Haman said, he's going to kill every Jew. Don't say because it doesn't consign you, you are going to leave everybody. Go and plead our cause before the king. And Esther wasn't going. Saying that the king hasn't called me. He said, you must know your season. Maybe this is the period where God allowed you to be there. By all standards, you are a slave. You are not supposed to be there. But God has helped you. God has helped you. There is a saying in Yoruba, If God answer you, don't mock your friend. God has just favored you. Help them. Because you don't know tomorrow. You don't know tomorrow. Hallelujah. They may be hard working more than you, but God has just favored you. They may be more intelligent than you, God has just favored you. Don't now say because God has helped you, you begin to look down on people. People you should have helped, you begin to say all kinds of things to them. You begin to insult them. You are abusing the grace upon your life. You are abusing the grace of God upon your life. And there is a consequence. There is a consequence for it. You can't go scot free. God put you there so that you can be a blessing to others. Not that you can begin to look down on others. It is not your doing that makes you who you are. It is the grace of God upon your life. There are people who are more hardworking, more intelligent, more powerful than you, but they never get to where you are. They never have the opportunity you have. God gave it to you, and you begin to use it to mock others. Do you know what the Bible says? He that mock a poor man, that insulted a poor man, insult his maker. That means you are telling his maker you didn't make him well. But you don't know that his money is in your hand. That poor money, that poor man money, God gave it to you so that you can look after him. So the money in the hands of anybody is a ministry that God has given you to others. Not for you and your family. Any opportunity and privilege you have is not for you and your family. It's for the others. The Bible says, think highly of others more than yourself. You have to think more about the others more than yourself. But when you think about yourself more than the others, you will face the consequence. Esther, if you remain silent at this time, God will rescue us through another person, but you will miss your time. God cannot be stranded. Hello? God cannot be what? Stranded. If he want to use you, he doesn't make yourself available. He will bypass you and use another person for his glory. If God used me to do something for others, I don't see it as a big thing. I see it as a great privilege, God. God used me to help you. Ah, what a great thing, God. Helping people and you begin to be so proud of it. 
talk about it. Molest them everywhere. If not for me, you will not eat. If not for me, you will not. If God used you to bless somebody, it's a great privilege. Thank God that God, I thank you for making me worthy to use for this person. Now begin that you begin to look down on them. Then I say, if not me, that thing will not go well. One day somebody came to my office and he called me and said, I want to help you, Pastor. And I said, that's fine. He said, I want to help the church. And I said, that's nice. He now said, if I give you this money, you will divide the church into two. The offices in the church, you will divide it into two. I will take half. You will take half. Then you will arrange, me and my group, Half of you will be on one side in the front. Me and my group too will be on, on another side. When you preach your own preaching, me too, I get my own thing. I will also now come and preach my own thing too. You see, if you're a pastor, you see some things. So. <laughs> I'm not telling you somebody told me in the somebody told me in this church that he's going to give me the money to run the church. That he want to invest the money in this church. But I must recognize him. I must give him a front seat. His ministry does not tally with my own ministry. But he said, when I do this week, he will come and do another week. <laughs> and I call him that, are you not afraid of God? No, there is no fear of God in you at all. That's what I told him. I said, you don't have fear of God in you. Because if you have fear, your, your house, why you are thinking of, come and tell me this rubbish, you should have think about it. If you are to be doing this, you will not survive going out. God will have spiked you to death. I said, I will remain poor forever if that is the condition. And there is no way God can be stranded. There is no way God can be stranded. If you did not allow him to use you, he will use other person. And I said, get out of my office. Today, the person is still my friend. We talk, we laugh. But he has not gone far with his own. His own ministry is a caricature everywhere. When he talk, everybody laughs. No, the reason why God put you in that position at that season. Amen, somebody. There is nothing on this earth than understanding your season and not miss your season. Don't miss that season. Season to do good, do it. Season to be there for somebody, be there for them. Season to sacrifice, sacrifice. Season to do the right thing you have to do, just do it. Esther, you will know that and know whether you have attained royalty for such a time as this. Esther, maybe God put you in this position for a period like this and you say you can't go and see the king. To just talk to them about what a man plan to do. Esther, don't forget where you are coming from. And when Esther heard this word, she broke down in tears. And he said, fast for me, I'm going to the king. Even if I perish, I perish. He rose up. And he went and met the king. And that's why Esther is much respected to today. Because she did what she has to do. God positioned him there to just speak for the Jew. That is the whole assignment. Everything can be your assignment, but you need to understand your assignment and understand the season of it. I cannot save the whole world. You cannot save the whole world. I cannot help the whole world. You cannot help the whole world. But when your season comes, and your assignment comes. Understand that this is the reason why I'm here. It could be the reason why I'm here. We 
Some people, we have seen them at their humble beginning in this commission. And God lift them. Then all of a sudden, they, with their language, is that this church is too small for me to be here. We saw their little beginning when they came. And we saw when they began to say, this place is too small for me now. I'm too big. There are no big men here. Let me go to where big men are. Esther! For if you remain silent at this time, liberation and rescue will arise from the Jew from another place. And you and your father's house will perish. Since you did not help when you have the chance. And who knows whether you have attained royalty for such a time as this. And for this very purpose. Who knows God bless them so that they can be a blessing for this ministry. Then they now God bless and desecrated this. The thing is that if they would just go quietly, I wouldn't have even mind. They would now go and begin to tarnish the image of this ministry. That's the most sad. They are that one beats my imagination. If you want to go, go quietly. Nobody will chase you with anything. Thank God you have a pastor who doesn't chase people with money. How many times have you raised money since you've come here, sir? If you want to do, you do. If you don't want to do, God cannot be stranded. We'll teach you that it is good to do. But if you refuse not to do, God cannot be stranded. Amen, somebody. But know that it could be because of this very reason that's why you are here. It could be because of, you could have been anywhere else, it could have been any place else. But God brought you here for what you want to do. Understand the season and don't miss the season. Understand your assignment and don't miss the season. If here is your assignment and you go to another place, it will not be accepted by God. Understand your assignments and the season. When you give me one CD, when it's very important to me, I will value it than giving me one million when I don't need it. I don't know if I'm speaking to somebody. Don't wait till you become millionaire before you start helping people. The people that God sent to your life, you will have missed them a long time. One CD at an appropriate time is better than one million at the time that is not appropriate. The person was alive. He need, he need a 2,000 Ghana CD to go to the hospital. You didn't offer it. When he died, he now said, I'm ready to spend 20,000 Ghana CD for his coffee. Does it matter to him? Even if you like, put, put him together. Does it matter? If you like, if you use cheap board to make his coffin, does it matter? If you like, roll him on clothes and bury him, does it matter? Put him on fire and criminate him, does it matter? So you are waiting till they die before you now paint the house. You renovate the house. You now say, I'm buying 20,000 Ghana City caskets. I'm doing first class funeral for a dead man. I wish some dead could rise up. They will slap some people at their funeral. Hallelujah. If some dead, it's possible for dead to arise. At the funeral, some people, they will chase them away from the church. Know your assignment and know your season. Amen, somebody. Let me close with this. Facts about time. Write this thing down. The facts about time. Number one. Time is very powerful. Time is very powerful. Time is more powerful than the best of human beings. Who is the most more powerful person on this earth? Hmm? Yeah? How many of them? Time has swallowed. Time has swallowed how many of them? 
more powerful than them. I put something on my status yesterday and I said, and I begin to link. List the thing. Emperor Nero, absent, gone. Time swallowing. Hey, Selassie, gone. Time swallow him. Idi Amin, gone. Time swallow him. Alessandra the Great that conquered the whole world. Time conquer him. Absent. Gone. Mention anybody. Julius Caesar. Time conquer him. Shakespeare. Time. The great years and to Time what? Swallow. Time is more powerful. So you have to begin to know that you don't joke with time. It will conquer anybody and everybody. It has been before you are. Where you go, time will continue. So you must use your time. Well, understand the time. Because time is more powerful than you. Before you realize, the greatest of the greater will become nobody with time. Hallelujah. As powerful as mention anybody, any terrible woman may, as powerful as Hitler is now, time is swallowing. You will even walk on his graveyard and he can't do you anything. Time has taken him away. As powerful as Hitler, who tried to conquer the whole world was, time war conquer him. Don't joke with your time. Number two, time reveal things. Time reveals things. Time is a revealer of all secrets. Time is a what? Revealer of all secrets. It's a matter of time. That which is covered shall be uncovered. That's why I say in everything, give time chance. It will prove the thing to you. If the truth does not come today, it will come out tomorrow. If it does not come out tomorrow, it will come out another day. If it does not come out in your lifetime, it will come out when you are gone. Truth will always come out. Time will reveal everything that is hidden. Time is the greatest revealer. Time reveals things. Number three, time heal. Time heal. No matter how angry you are, give it time. It will heal. Let somebody do something to you and if you can give it time, you will be fine. Something you think that you cannot survive, give it time. It will heal you. Time. It heals. When you see somebody who lost their husband now, say, ah, I will die, oh, I will die, oh, I will die, oh. I can't live without the person. I can't do it. Today. After some time, it's on the chicken. When he carry one chicken, ah, my husband, look at this picture. He's fine. Oh. <laughs> you have forgotten. I will die with you. After some time, if you see the ghost of the husband in the house, he will begin to say, please call pastor. I'm seeing my husband around. And let them come and cast the spirit out. <laughs> Somebody will say, I cannot do without you. After some time, let the ghost of the man visit the house. It is the wife that will organize prayer meeting, deliverance in the house. This spirit must not return here again. <laughs> Everybody gather. The Holy Spirit, I'm not with you. I separate myself from the dead. Dead and living cannot be together. I cast you out. I will die, I will die. It's a matter of time. Time heals. Give time. If somebody is too angry, and give them time. Time is powerful. He will heal the hearts. Have you seen somebody that angry forever? No. A time will come that, you know, that thing that matters to you today will not matter tomorrow. Hallelujah. What matters to you most tomorrow today? With time, it will not matter again. Somebody say time. So when is your season? Catch it. 
Number four, time is bigger and greater than anyone. Time is what? Bigger and greater than anyone. Somebody is harassing you today thinking that he has power. Give the person time. I've seen a lot of husbands that maltreated their wife. When they get to the old age, they become vegetables. See how their wife tortured them. I went to one house and the man was eating and the thing was coming out of the man. The wife take the peep. Do you clean your mouth? No sense. I said, Mama, why? He said, this man, when he was young, what he did to me, now he's sitting down there, somebody's looking after him. Yeah, yeah, man. <laughs> the wife take the napkin, knock the mouth. Clean your mouth. The man said, sorry, sorry, sorry. Time. It will make the giant to become baby. <laughs> it's a matter of time. Give the person time. Time is bigger than the person. Hallelujah. Have you not seen some people that you are so much afraid in your lifetime before? When you are young. Now when you look at them, you, you know, you ask yourself, ah, why am I afraid of this man when I was young? Time has swallowed the man. Hallelujah. Time is bigger than anybody and stronger than anybody. Hallelujah. Number five. Time is infinite. Time is forever. Infinite. Forever and ever. You know, when you are on top of the game, you think that you're, you know, you finish the time. When you are young, you used to go to club, you used to dance, you used to do afro, you used to do this thing. You think that you will finish time. You think that, ah, the world has ended here. You will finish the life today. Well, it's a matter of time. <laughs> that time continues. It is you that will grow old. <laughs> and it will leave you behind. Nobody can finish time. It's time that will finish everybody. It's time that will finish everybody. Hallelujah. When they are dancing, when they are doing a flow in those days, they think, that, ah, these are the highest of the babe. Where are they today? When Maurice Minor came, we all thought the first time they released Maurice Minor car or Mini Cooper or Beatles. You're in better. <laughs> Those days, when they release it, ah, anybody riding is saying, ah, they are the highest. With time, when you look at the car, if they dash you, you even run away. Somebody say time. Don't joke with time. It's forever. It is true that it's not forever. I'm sure when they ask our great, 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 great grandfather, they think that their time, the whole world will end. Everybody keep preaching. Say the world will finish. Everything we have seen, everything will finish. Since how many pastors have been preaching it for years? Time keeps swallow them. I'm continuing. I'm not ready. It is only God that will put an end to time, not a man. Hallelujah. When we get to 2000, they say, ah, this is the millennium year. Everybody is going to die. How many people understand? There's nothing they didn't say that the world will come to an end in 2000, year 2000, millennium year. Some people sell their property. Some people sell their house. Ah, prediction. This one, this one, this one, this one. The whole world is coming. Somebody even wrote a book. The world coming to an end in 2000. I checked my this library and I saw the book. Somebody predicted that the war will come to an end in 2000. 21 years ago, the war has not finished. We don't even see the sign that it's going to finish. I say, if I had the man, I will write a book. I say, I made mistake. I write another book. I made mistake. Title, I made mistake. <laughs> time is infinite. Number six, time wait for no one. It keep moving. Time wait for no one. Time keep moving. If it's your time, you don't use it well. It don't pass you by. Hallelujah. It wait for no one. Time keep moving. Time wait for no one. 
So don't joke with it. Hallelujah. You can't hold the time. Can you? You can't hold time. Don't go, don't go, don't go. I'm not ready. Next year I will be ready. Another year I will be ready before you know you are gray. Before you know your teeth are started shaking. Before you know. It's a time wait for nobody. You have to understand that. It keeps moving. If you waste it, it passes you by. Know your season. Know when to shine. When the light on you, dance very well. Because your time will soon pass. Hallelujah. When is your time? I went to funeral uh, on Friday. And I saw the picture of the man. The man was 80, the wife. I saw the picture. And when I saw the picture, I look at the picture. I look at the woman. They got married while the woman was about 20 something years old. I look at the woman. She was so beautiful. Like a queen. And I look at the obituary and I went to the front. I go and look at the woman face. Well, ah, ah. Look at this queen. Look at her now. She cannot even walk now. I said, time wait for nobody. When is your time to shine? Shine. When is your season to do something? Do it. When is your season to do it? Do it. You want to marry? Marry. You want to give it? Give it. You want something? Do it now before you realize you will be on a little bit. Banjo. You know that thing? Sometime in the evening, when the person has carried the trade on his head, buy rodo, buy pepper, buy pepper, buy pepper. When he said, How much is this pepper? He said, It's three city. Can I give you two five? I don't want. When it's around five o'clock, it is you that will now be calling everybody. Are you not interested in pepper? Three for two CD. <laughs> three for two CD. May your time never be like that. That is what is called banjo. Time, powerful thing. If your uh, time come, make your mind, make your decision. You don't have forever. It's part of it. Number seven. God is the only controller and master of time. You cannot say change the time. I tell people, how many Sarah do we have in our generation? I believe in God. Even Sarah at 90 gave birth. Are you Sarah? At 90, she gave birth. How many Sarah do you see in our generation? And even in their generation, how many Sarah was there? God will do what you want to do, but you can't detect to God. You cannot tempt God. We tempt God with time. I will do it at any time I have. No, you are tempting God. The time will come, your season has expired. No matter how you are, if you're a footballer, when you are 35, nobody wants to sign you. You are 35, it is now, now. Oh, manager, can you find me a club? I now want to start a football career at 35, 38. That's the age they retire. Most footballers retire at 40. That is if you are very strong. And at 40, you now started practicing. Oh, I want to be a footballer. Pele, Ronaldo of our time at 40. Even Backyard FC will not sign you. <laughs> backyard FC. <laughs> they won't sign you. Amen, somebody. <laughs> Your season has passed. <laughs> Don't tempt God. And you now begin to run to pastor, prayer, prayer camp, prayer mountain. Pray for me. I need a club. Sometimes when some people come and give me prayer point, I look at them and say, ah, hmm. bro, this prayer point you are giving me, your time for it has passed. But if you say to this person, you say your pastor is not, doesn't have faith. <laughs> and that's it. God bless you. It will be well with you. Just continue. Just continue. God will help you. That's how you decide the person. Huh? 
Because if you tell the brother, this thing, your sister has passed this prayer, there's no way he can come to pass. They will tag you, say that pastor doesn't have faith, he's a bad pastor. Ah, it will happen. God, may God help you. May the Holy Spirit help you. Just go. You shall find favor. Go. <laughs> know that you can't tempt God with your time. It's only God that can control time. No man being can do it. Let's quickly round up. Number time transform. Time transform people. I was told of a lady that came to London. My mother told me about the story of a lady that came to London. When she came, he said to her, when this lady came to London first time, she was from a bush, complete village. So they said he entered their door, and they tell you that anytime you want to enter any door, knock. And the lady said, sorry, ma, sorry, ma, I will knock. From that day, anywhere that day they want to enter, he said they were just sitting down there. They asked her to go and bring something from the fridge. He now get to the entrance of the fridge. Co, co, co. Co, co, co. I go. Co, co, co. The fridge door. So that the water can say, yes, come in, take me. Or the chicken can say, yes, come in, take me. He said they stood there, they laugh. Ah. And they call her that, why are you knocking? He said, you told me that any time I come to any door, I should knock. Later, the lady went to school, graduated, and he was speaking for now like anything. And he now said, me, this lady, when she first came, that even when they tell her knock, she was knocking fridge doors. You look at her, says, ah, I was bush before. Now I'm refined. Time transform anybody. Give anybody chance, they will transform. Give them chance. You yourself, you are not like this before. You yourself, you are not like this. If they show your picture 20 years ago, 25, 30 years ago, you yourself, you deny yourself. Say, it can't be me. <laughs> no, 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 no. It cannot be me. <laughs> but look at how you have refined now. Look at the fine man you are now. Look at the gentle man you are. Look at the beautiful girl you are right now. Time transform. Anything can change with time. Give it time. Number nine. Time is a greater, the greatest teacher. Time is the greatest teacher. Time teaches us about the lesson of life. Time teaches us about what? The lesson of life. Because of time. Let me go. Number ten. You don't know how much time you have. That is it. You don't know how much time you have. So make use of it today, today. Tomorrow, anybody can drop dead here. Even before the close of the day. Whoever knows that anybody will die the way they die? President Moss, Moss of Haiti, Last week, he was sleeping in the room with his wife, and I'm Robert, and some gang just came in and killed him. The whole president of a nation. Just last week, while he was sleeping in his own room, he didn't go out, he didn't go anything. He closed and he said, I will see you tomorrow. Then straight to whether heaven or hell, only God knows where he's going. So you don't know how much time you have. Don't say something, I'll do it tomorrow, I'll do it another year, I'll do it this and that. You don't know how much time you have. Make haste while sun shine. You don't know how much time you have. Number 11, the amount of time invested in anything define who you are in that field. The amount of time invested in anything determine who you are in everything. Anything you focus your time on, you become a master on it. That's one thing with time. If you decide to invest time in anything, in no time, you become a master in it. So use your time well in something, so that you can be master of something. And lastly, if you waste your time, you will surely regret it. 
If you waste your time, you will surely will regret it. How that you waste your time with any man, with any woman, with anything in life, with, you know, don't waste your time. It's too precious. It's too valuable. It's too big. When your season comes and you waste your time, you will regret it. If you waste your time on anything, you will surely regret it. Rise on your feet and begin to talk to God. Talk to the Lord. Talk to the God Almighty. Talk to the King of Kings. Talk to God about your time. Say, Father, don't let me waste my time in life. Don't let me waste my time on anything that I will regret later. Don't let me waste my time in life. Don't let me waste my time in life. Don't let me waste my time on anything in life. Father, help me, Lord. I don't want to waste my time on anything in life. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name, we are praying.